This video is brought to you by Flash Routers. If you want to learn more about protecting your home and all the devices connected to your network, click the link in the description. Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now the Raspberry Pi is a very versatile little computer and it can do lots of interesting things, including it can be configured to be a network router. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now, before we go on any further, I just want to point out I'm going to be saying the word router a lot during this video, and I'm going to be using the British English pronunciation, which is router, and not the American um, English pronunciation, which is router. Okay, I'm not going to say anything more about it, but there are different ways of pronouncing things around the world. In British English, the word is router. And I'm also going to put two other words up here on the screen now and ask you, if you use router as a pronunciation, how do you pronounce those two words? Is it consistent with how I pronounce router or is it consistent with how you pronounce router? That's all I'm going to say on the matter. Okay, let's get cracking. So there are lots of different reasons why you'd want to include a router on your network. Now basically what a router does is it takes traffic from one type of network, routes it, forwards it out through another network port onto another network. And so, for example, if you had in your house, let's say, your normal home network, but then you built a network just for gaming, for example, and you had some gaming machines connected there, and you want to keep all that traffic just there on that gaming network, there is a way of using a router so you can connect these two different networks together. And when I say different networks, I mean they've got different addresses, so they're not within the same address range. So they're completely separate, different address range, different hardware. But you can use a router to kind of connect the two networks together. And when it needs to happen, traffic can be routed, can be directed, forwarded from one network onto the other network. Now the Raspberry Pi of course comes with one ethernet connection and it also comes with uh, built-in Wi-Fi. Now I'm gonna show you in this video how you can do uh, two lots of wired routing. So we're gonna be using a USB ethernet adapter, which of course you just plug into the USB and that now gives you a second wired connection. And we're also later on in the video gonna be using the Wi-Fi connection as well. So you actually have three networks all connected together on your Raspberry Pi. Now, all the actual detailed instructions, what commands do you type, you know, configure this, install that, you know, whatever, are actually gonna be on a, a page that I've created. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. So today in this video, I'm gonna talk about the concepts and the actual commands you type into Linux, you'll find over there if you actually want to follow this step by step to do it yourself. Now, my assumption is that you have a home network it probably has a modem or a router from your internet service provider and that you've got a few machines, maybe a laptop, a PC, a tablet, a couple of phones, and you're able to connect the Raspberry Pi via the eth wired ethernet to that router or through another hub onto that router, okay? And that the Raspberry Pi, when it boots up, gets its network addressing for this first port from that um, from that router, from that modem, from your ISP. So using DHCP, it gets an address and a default gateway and that kind of thing, which is probably how most of your networks actually uh, are configured. So the first step is connect up the USB ethernet adapter and then to configure it to have a static IP address. So what happens in Linux is that the first wired ethernet port is called ETH0 for Ethernet 0. And when you plug in the USB adapter, it will appear as ETH1, so that's Ethernet 1, and we want to create a static address for that second uh, wired Ethernet port, which because we're counting from zero is called one, because it's zero, one, so the second one is one, if that makes sense to you. Now, again, the way you do that is in that document that I'll link to in the description below. Once you've done that, you've now got two ethernet ports, one connected to your home network, and one that's there configured with a static IP address, but at the moment not connected to anything else at all. The next step is to install a piece of software called DNS Mask. Now, DNS Mask is a small, lightweight set of services for small networks. So it's a really good way of, on the Raspberry Pi, providing different services, and most importantly, DHCP services running on your Raspberry Pi. So you've probably already got DHCP giving out addresses on your modem, now we're gonna have a DHCP server running on the Raspberry Pi to give out addresses on Ethernet 1. So that second port, not your home network, but the network you're going to connect it to. And again, the instructions on how you do that 
are in the document. And in that document, I define a new address range 192.168.7.x onwards. Okay, and dot one is the address of the Raspberry Pi. And then I define, I think, between 100 and 120, 20 devices that you will give out as dynamic addresses using the DHCP. And finally, you need to uh, configure two things on the Raspberry Pi itself that enables packet forwarding so that what comes in on Ethernet 1 is forwarded to Ethernet 0 when it is appropriate. And there's also something to do with the IP tables that allows a kind of network address translation to happen. The instructions are over there. But what you're basically saying to the Linux kernel, and this is the great thing, it's a feature of the Linux kernel. Hey, Linux kernel, when you see something coming in on Ethernet 1 that actually should be on the network for Ethernet 0, please forward those packets and back the other way. And so the kernel itself in its network, deep down in its network layers, it can start using both of those Ethernet ports and sending traffic back and forth. And that what is a router. You've created a router using the features of the Linux kernel. And so once you've followed all those steps, that now means you can have a separate network. So let's say a couple of PCs, maybe a switch or a hub that you then plug via wired cable into that second port of the uh, Raspberry Pi. And when they boot up, they'll get their addresses from the Raspberry Pi. They can talk to each other on that network, and then they can talk to other devices on your home network through the Raspberry Pi. And as I said, it's also possible to do that through the Wi-Fi connection. So the first thing to do, again, is to set a static IP address for the wireless connection on the Raspberry Pi. So now you've got Ether 0, you've got Ether 1, and then you'll have WLAN 0. So three network interfaces in total, and WLAN 0 is the default wireless LAN. And once you have a static IP address set for that, you then need to install a piece of software called Host APD. So that's the Host Access Point uh, Server, which is actually a way of turning your Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi into an access point, just like a Linksys or some other kind of router like that. So by doing that, now you will see your that network appear on your phone, on a tablet, on a laptop, and you can connect to it over Wi-Fi, just like you connect to the modem or the router from your internet service provider. And again, there are instructions on that web page on how to configure the host AP software so that you can then broadcast your own network. And again, once that's done, you can connect, say, with a tablet to the Raspberry Pi. You can connect to other devices on your second network together through the Raspberry Pi, or if traffic needs to be routed out onto the other network, even out onto the internet, it will do that by going in through the wireless uh, network, and then out through Ether Zero, and then onto your existing network. Now, one quick tip, if you find at different points things aren't quite working, a good old reboot is often required. Now, technically, all the steps that I've given you, because you're starting down and starting up different services, they should all work as they are written. But I did find that sometimes you need to just reboot to make sure that actually it comes up as uh, you have configured. So if you are scratching your head a bit saying, why isn't this working? I followed the instructions, do a reboot, and it should work. Have you tried turning it off and on again? And of course, that's what actually a router does that you buy from, let's say, Linksys or Netgear or whoever. It's a way of routing different types of network traffic to different destinations. And in fact, that's what my flash router does. It is a VPN router. So the outbound connection to the internet is encrypted over a VPN and everything that connects to it gets routed through and down that VPN, which means that I know that any device connecting to that router via Wi-Fi or by a wired connection actually uh, is going out over a, an encrypted connection out onto the internet. So this will be a good point to roll the uh, little sponsorship message from Flash Routers. Flash Routers was the first ever recipient of the Gary Explains approved award. Flash Routers provide the hardware, that's a router, and the software in custom open source firmware so you can have a permanent VPN connection. With it, you are guaranteed everything is flowing over a VPN. I use mine every day. Okay, so that's about it. Now, of course, network topology, that's how you design different networks, can be pretty crazy. And it can get a bit like spaghetti, where this thing's connected to that thing, and that thing's connected to this thing, and this thing's not connected to that thing, but the other thing's, and it just like gets pretty crazy. So this is a simple example of two networks 
that are connected via a Raspberry Pi. Of course, there are many, many different variations and kind of tweaks and different ways of doing this. This is just one example. So if it doesn't fit exactly your needs, I hope it was useful enough that you could see what can be achieved even if it doesn't particularly achieve your desired goal. So remember, network topology can be a bit like spaghetti. Okay, before I go, just a couple of announcements. I'm launching a newsletter, so do go over to GaryExplains.com and subscribe there if you'd be interested to get a newsletter from me with lots of interesting things about technology in it. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and uh, I suppose that's it. I'll see you in the next one.